Hello everyone, and welcome to the next part of the David Grimm What If! Now last time, David was in Kalos to get back his Pokémon, but he also dealt with the Pokémon contest scene and helped bring back the Battle Mazon, while also befriending three more people along the way. This time, however, he'll be off to the Alola region to see if his father is located there and bring him to justice. And we begin this track with a plane ride to the region instead of a boat. Thankfully though, this one's a lot faster than before, but when the plane arrives on the runway, it is hit by a large purple beam of energy and, um, yeah, it, it hits the runway hard before catching on fire. Naganado, I told you to aim for the hydraulics, not the wheels, so that David and the others would only be severely injured. Now you caused a higher body count for no reason. Vincent then grabbed Naganado by the throat and threw it against a tree before proceeding to return it to the ball, and then turning around to face his Lucario, as well as a dark, almost pitch black, rabbit Pokemon. Some people just can't seem to follow directions. As for you, Zeus, I have dealt with your abusive parents. The nerve of some Pokemon to just abandon that child like that. But at least you're in good hands now. The rabbit proceeded to cross its arms and turn around before Vincent returned to the ball as well and walk away with Lucario. Now, back at the crash scene, fortunately, no one was killed. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, shit, we're past the one minute mark. Oh, no. Um, so, um, David got a few bruises and minor burns, but was able to get out and help a few survivors trap in their seats thanks to his Pokemon. There was one pinned down by a piece of debris that he tried to lift with the Cario, but was unsuccessful. He was about to call Tyrantrum, but then an Incineroar and his trainer pushed him back and were able to lift the debris off. Sorry about that. Let's get him to safety. Right, thank you, um... It's... Will. Now let's go. And so the two make it off the plane with the survivor and get him to the emergency services, now on the runway, before the two proceed to go back and help rescue more survivors, but were stopped by said emergency services. So the two go to the nearby medical tent and begin to make small talk while they're being patched up, and it's also where they find out 13 passengers were killed in the plane crash. So, we can both agree that was not an accident, right? Well, I gave you that idea. Was it the purple beam that hit our wing? Yes. Let's just find out who did it and put them in prison. Fortunately, the husband might have an idea. Just gotta wait until we're cleared. But, yeah. Welcome to Alola, my home region. Well then, uh, gotta say I'm not impressed for obvious reasons. Well, what region are you from then? Can't be much better. I come from the Dokken region. Oh. That Elscape? Yep. So, is it true that you can't be a trainer until you turn 20? Correct. And there's 13 subregions each with 8 badges. I could see why you left. After a little more small talk about what they do, David being an agent slash grunt and Will being a teacher's assistant, they end up being cleared by the medic shortly after and head over to Will's place. Along the way, however, they encounter a guy berating a starter. You look like shit! I can't believe I spent all that time evolving you, not knowing you turned into th this... This abomination! Yeah, I'm looking to have some weirdos. Anyways, let's go to- He then saw David heading over to the trainer with his fists clenched. Funny, the only abomination I see is the one shouting at their starter. The fuck you say to me? How dare you call me an abomination when that trash heap behind me is worse? All I see is a cute water type getting abused by a shitty trainer. That's a male prion! I can't travel throughout the world with that he she! Male or female, it's still the same starter that cares about you. And why does it matter if he looks like that? Are you brain dead? He looks like a chicken sort of a man! I'd be a laughing stock with that thing! It's me in the kitchen and- I ask again. Why does it matter if he looks like that? Boys can be pretty and girls can be tough. So fuck your stereotypical bullshit, and fuck you for abusing that sea lion. The guy tried to punch David again, but David punched him in the gut, and then the sexist perk threw brown his Pokeball at David's head. You want that trap? Fine! I'm gonna get a real male Pokemon! The rude guy storms off, and David walks over to pat the Brione's head. It's okay, little fella. That man's not gonna hurt you anymore. Brione slowly smiled, and then hugged David. I'll show that prick. Let's work together to show him that he is the shitty one. Not you. So, yeah, David got another starter. Later. I'm Professor Emerald, but my students call me Telly for some reason. Anyways, Will told me what happened, so let's get to work. A couple hours pass, and they hack into a camera outside of the airport that is recording an hour prior, showing a blonde guy in armor with a Naga Noddle getting ready to fire a purple beam and then firing it. 
Yep, that's my dad. Alright, well, let's get the cops in. Call it a day. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. They play the race card here, too? Even outside of that, we can't report it because of the method we got this proof. I could lose my job or get blamed as the person responsible for the attack and end up in jail or Wilkie get those consequences. Plus, let's be real, when have the police ever been effective in a Pokemon region? Touche. Alright, I'll go deal with it. And by me, you mean we. No, Enhel, I'm letting you hog all the spotlight. After the lesson today, of course, remember. Why don't you join us today, David? I'm teaching my students about Alolan variants. Maybe useful for your agency. And so David learns about the Alolan variants and sends it off to his boss. But after that lesson, him and Will are given Z bracelets and head off to locate Vincent. Fortunately for David, it's not too long for him before he finds the first trial, locating the young goose. Huh. Well, I don't have time to waste, so let's see what I can do. Brino then pops out of the ball and- Hey, Brione, how about we take on this task? That sexist prick thinks you can't be pretty because you're a male? Let's prove him wrong. Sing a song to attract the young goose and I'll catch it. Brione smirks and begins singing. At first it didn't work, but as time went on, the young goose were slowly falling in love with the music and began to approach the Brione. But before they realized it was a male, David caught the two young goose and completed that part of the trial. David and Brione gave each other a high five and went to go curb the totem Pokemon's ass in the next week. After leaving, they head off to the next trial, and along the way, they do some training alongside David's other Pokemon and manage to get along with one another. Most notably, Greninja and Lucario. Though Tyrantrum did scare Brione a bit by accident, and Leafiona had to, well, de-escalate the situation. Oof. Also, due to the Pokemon limit of 6, Luxray was put in the box to give Leafeon some time to shine, and Luxray some time to chill after what happened in the last part. So, uh, yeah. A little while later, David and Will have completed the first island, and are now doing the second island's trials in different orders, which is weird because normally it's in a set order, but whatever, maybe the guards have an off day. So Will is taking on the fire trial first, and David is doing the fire trial last, because, well, he's terrified of fire. And it's after completing the water trial, then, he gets an idea on how to handle that fear. You know what? No. No. I am tired of being petrified by fire. It caused me to lose my Pokémon before, and I won't let that happen again. Especially since I'm sure Vincent's gonna use that weakness against me, should we fight again. I need to conquer this fear of mine, and I think I know how. It's going to hurt, but I have to try. He then stops by our waterfall and sends out his Brione before proceeding to give it a TM. This waterfall is decently cold. What I'm going to give you is the TM Scald. When I give the command, I want you to aim Scald in my back, and the two different water temperatures should be enough to slightly hurt me, but not enough to burn me. Brione shakes his head at this. He doesn't want to hurt his trainer. I know you're scared, Brione, but I need to do this to conquer my fear. Brione is unsure of this, but then Greninja pops out of the ball and gestures that he'll do it. Okay, you're right, Greninja. I'm so sorry, Brione. I shouldn't have put you through that. Brianna then pats David's head and then returns to the ball. And then the process began. At first, there was screaming, almost as loud as a younger David screamed during the traumatic event when Vincent burned him with scalding water, and time to drown his child. And as the wound began to reopen, so did the memories of that event. The hospital visit, the reconstruction, the yelling between the parents. It was all flowing back to him like the water flowing down the falls behind him. As the screaming stopped, Greninja was about to cease the use of scald, but David stopped him. Greninja, don't stop! Please! I know this hurts you! And you bet your ass it hurts me having to go through this! But losing you and our friends will learn a lot more! And I refuse! God, I will not accept that happening again! So please! Don't stop! Greninja was silent for a minute before continuing the procedure. The screaming continued, as did the memories of that traumatic event. But David refused to give up as he gritted his teeth and closed his eyes through it all. And kept pushing forward through the pain and recollection, until reaching the end of the memory and seeing a younger version of himself, his back also covered in burns. David, noticing this, approached the kid and hugged him, but then the kid spoke up, followed by an illusion of Zucario, and then the rest of his Pokemon. I know it hurts, but then this is your fault. You didn't ask for this. You didn't do anything wrong during that level of punishment. All this is because of him. He made us terrified of the flames. But if anything, fire and warmth is not our enemy. Vincent is our enemy. He used that resource he needed to survive and used it to harm. So please, stop running away from the flames. Embrace it. Warm up from it. And use those flames to strike back at the one who harmed it and us. The older David's eyes widened as he slowly took in the words of his younger self, and the illusions began to slowly fade, only leaving behind a golden lighter. David then got back up, picked it up, 
and lit it. His eyes reopened in the real world, and he began to stop screaming as his body began to accept the warmth the hot water gave him. Greninja noticed this as well as his other Pokemon, and smiled, as did David, finally conquering his fear and is now ready to continue living his life. David gave all his Pokemon a hug before looking at his back to see the scar, now reopened one more time. This burn may be a part of me for the rest of my life, but that doesn't mean I should be scared of it, nor the fire that created the searing water. If anything, this burn's a reminder. I am flawed, scarred, and imperfect, but despite all that, I'm still here, despite all that, and I also have really good friends to help me through those times as well. Now it's time to move forward with my life. So eat shit, Vincent. You're going down. David smiled before facing his Pokemon once more and giving them all a high five before they went back to a motel to recover before taking on the last trial of the island, the fire one. Fortunately, that wasn't too hard. So they took on the totem Salazzle. Briona was taken out by its poison and the card was about to be sent out to Bone Club it, but then Tyrantrum just popped out of the ball and yeeted it off the volcano for poisoning Briona. Um, I, I guess we won? Uh... G good enough. Uh, here's the fire MC. Not too long after, they took down Olivia and David went to the next island. And on the boat ride there, they encountered that sexist prick again. Ah, Bray, you again! And still with that he-she, I take it! Well, that he-she helped me get to the third island, so clearly he's doing something right. Something right? He's an abomination! And now I got the Pokemon to deal with it! Go! Buzzwall! Yep, that prick is an Ultra Beast, and despite Brioni getting healed up as well as increased speed, it's getting its ass kicked by the creature. Brioni, don't give up! I know you can do it! That chance! That Ishii is nothing compared to the raw masculinity of my Buzzwall! Now off with its head! Buzzwall was about to decapitate Brioni, but then David got in the way and blocked the attack, surprising the two. You've gone too far, you little shit! Fuck this! Off with his head too, Buzzwall! Buzzwall, finish them off! What? Brione! You evolved! I knew you could do it! This can't be! That he she should be weaker than my boss wall! Appearances aren't everything. Like I said, boys can be pretty and girls can be tough. And in Primarina's case, he can be both. Alright, Primarina, let's finish it off with your greatest traits Sparkling Aria! As the two gave each other a high five, the other trainer was pissed. How dare you! That was my Pokemon! And you not only stole it, but you defeated me with it! I want it back! Stole? How can I steal something that you threw away? The sexist trainer was mad at this response and charged to David, but then Primarina tripped the trainer and he landed on his Pokeballs, giving the staff and passengers a good laugh. Once that was over, David went to go heal up his newly evolved Primarina and enjoy the rest of the ride while the other trainer went to go complain about his defeat. After making it to the third island, David saw Will near a lighthouse and was about to approach him, but he saw a figure resembling Vincent approaching Will and decided to snoop instead. You're not David. Give me a good reason to continue this conversation before I turn around. Well, I can have you arrested for what you did to that plane. You know that place don't do shit in these regions, right? Of course, but it kept you here for a little longer. So, mind telling me why Ultra Beasts are reappearing on this island? I thought they were sent home long ago. They were and still are. I have no affiliation with whoever is reopening the wormholes, but I spearheaded the operation to keep them closed. I don't believe a single word you said. That is not my problem. Now if you excuse me, I have work to do and a child to crush. What is your deal with David? I get he's your kid and all, but last I checked, a dad doesn't try to kill his son. A son would also inherit more than just the gender of the father. That child didn't inherit anything of mine, not even my unique power. I want him dead, but I won't be the one to do it, nor anyone else. I want him to do himself in, to finally remove that diseased branch of my lineage. Only then can this world be better off. I have no issues with you, or anyone on this island. If anything, David is the one who curses you and everyone else with his failures and incompetence as a trainer and as a human, and life will be better with him gone. I may not know David that well, but I know that what you say is bullshit. He's a good caring man, and I'm sure he'll be a good friend the more time we spend together. Well, I can see that you have a good heart, Will, even if it's placed on garbage like him. But it's one thing to say something, 
that's another act on it. So, show me what you've got. Vincent then pulls out his Lucario, and Will brings out his Incineroar. The two are evenly matched for the first minute, but as time goes on, Lucario begins to dodge its attacks and not even fight back, as if it's just toying with the cat. Meanwhile, Vincent isn't even saying anything, let alone issuing commands. Enough of this! Flare Blitz! But as Incineroar charged towards Lucario, the Lucario dodged it and hit Incineroar in the back with close combat, sending it to the ground hard. What the? You didn't even issue any commands! How is it listening to you? If you haven't figured it out by now, there's no point in stating it out loud. Now then, if you're quite done, let's end this Lucario. I don't care what special shit you've got, Vincent. Here's mine! Inferno! Overdrive! The area is then consumed in smoke, but only for a few minutes. After the smoke clears, however, to the trainer and David's surprise, Lucario is standing and has a green stem in its mouth. What? So you- Oh my god, yes, I gave it an Archerberry. Christ. That's also part of the reason I had Lucario dodge your fire attacks. You should have put two and two together after that. Speaking of together, however... The Lucario appears in front of Incineroar and hits it with another close combat, sending it colliding with his trainer and knocking them both down. But now I must be off. The top of the mountain is waiting for me. So that's why the guards let us do that trial in any order. David appears from behind his hiding spot and helps Will up, with Lucario lifting up Incineroar to their feet. What is with people asking obvious questions today? Yes, you are a failure. I am the champion of the Alola region. Not for long. We're gonna stop you and make you pay for all that you've done. Vincent then pulls out the lighter again, but David doesn't flinch or react to it. Huh? No response. Interesting. Regardless, you couldn't stop me from taking back my property before. And you won't succeed this time either. I'm not letting you take my Pokemon again. I'm stronger than last time. In brawn, yes. But not in mine. And besides, I have no reason to take your Pokemon. I have a superior Lucario, as well as your other Pokemon now. And after the completion of my newest experiment, I now have a superior electric type on top of that. The only thing I want is your head in the noose, a shot in your brain, or a knife in your heart. I'll take your party before. But if you wish to face me, I will take away the remaining ones you care about and make them hate you. And I will do it to Will, to Thano, to that wolf, and that redhead you helped in Kalos. Or, you can end it all right here, and save them the torture and hardship of having to go through the process. That was your last chance to save them. If you make it to the mountain, you have sealed all their fates. David, I'm so sorry. I thought I could take him. Why are you apologizing? You did the right thing. If anything, I'm sorry that I didn't act sooner. So, what are you gonna do? If you take him on, then... He took my party, my eye, and my childhood. I refuse to let him take anything else, so I'm gonna do my best to defeat him. Because I refuse to let anyone go through what I did when I was younger. And besides, if I do what he says, he'll get what he wants, and I lose everyone I care about as well. And that's something I'm not going to let happen. <laughs> That's good. So, uh, can we get to a center now? I need treatment for my, well, uh, everything. The two then have a laugh before proceeding at Will and its in Rotary. After that's taken care of, the two go on to take the electric trial down, and then go inside the Mart to complete Mimikyu's trial. But after Will beats the totem Mimikyu and gets the crystal, David notices the Mimikyu room as well as the pictures, and kneels down to the creature. Trying to be something you're not, scaring people away, being alone, I know that feeling all too well. For so long I was like that. But things do get better, little guy. Some may be scared, but there are others who are more welcoming and accepting. Hell, I think your costume is cute. And the fact you worked so hard to make this tells me that you're someone determined to succeed. I like that. A lot. And I'm sure my party would like that too. So, why don't you come with me? And then you won't have to be alone. The Mookie was silent for a moment before turning around and aims its shadow claw at David's heart. But David doesn't flinch or close his eyes, and his courage is rewarded as the Shadow Claw stops near his chest and morphs into a hand. David smiles and shakes it. After that, he comes out of the mart, finds out Will left for the final island, and is given two Z crystals one for the ghost, and he also gets a Mimikium Z. 
On the way to the final island, David decided to do some training with Mimikyu and Pretty Marina, and after an awkward first introduction, the two fairies were able to get along eventually, as they grew stronger with their trainer and even began teaching his entire party their respective Z-moves. Some were easy, and others were, uh, tricky. Namely Lopani and the Kario who kept tripping after the pose. David pats them on the head and smiles. It's okay, Lopani and the Kario. We'll get it mastered in due time. Lopani smiled and then gave him a big hug, with the Kario snickering at the awkwardness before they continued their training, eventually arriving at the final island. The Como trial looked to be a long and arduous one, but Lopani then picked David up and jumped over the mountain, skipping most of it entirely. <laughs> well, that's one way to do a trial. Thanks, Lopani. You picked the wrong house, fool! Later. And heading off to Mina's, who instructs them to go get the other petals from the other captains. I mean, I could just go to Poke Spencer's if you want more of these. Will and Tele were snickering a bit, while Mina was confused. I don't remember putting petals there. <laughs> Fair enough. We'll be back shortly. So they do the stuff and complete that part of the trial, but when it comes time to deal with the totem or Bombi, Will beats it easily thanks to his Incineroar. After he gets healed up by Mina, though, David takes it on, and, uh, we run into an issue. Most of his Pokemon don't really have anything to counter it due to its unique type, and as a result, David ends up losing the battle. Oh, so sorry, but you can always fight it again later. Thank you, Mina. I will do better next time. After they left, Will and Tully gave David a pat on the back for doing his best. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. You gonna be okay? Oh yeah, this isn't the first time I lost. Besides, a loss is a good opportunity for me to improve from my mistakes, so you guys go on ahead. I'll catch up in due time. Okay. Well, if you need a hand, let us know. I will. Thank you. Will and Tully then leave the island, and David goes to the center to heal up. Once that's done, it's late at night, and David is outside with his Pokemon thinking about what happened. Last I checked, fairies are weak to steal and poison, which was something I never taught any of you. And considering those types who couldn't give us more coverage, that is something I take full responsibility for. I messed up. But that doesn't mean I can't make it up to you. So let's figure out which one can learn either type, and then we go from there. The other mons nod in agreement to their trainer, and David begins the process of seeing what they can learn in terms of TMs and lost moves. After a while, David determines the best possible options to be Luxray, Lucario, and Leafeon. Tyrantrum was considered, but due to its large size, it was unable to be used for the trial much to its disappointment as well as David's, but at the very least, it did have Toxic taught to it just in case it's needed outside of this trial, only to find out he already learned Poison Fang. Whoops. And as the three mons were practicing their steel poison moves, with Luxray showing the most promise with its raw strength, Tyrantrum began to think about what it could do after seeing Luxray coat his tail in steel, but more on that later. So the next day, David took on Rabombi again, and after Leafy and Lucario didn't fare well, Luxray was sent out and utterly dominated Rabombi, first paralyzing it, and then hitting it over and over again with Iron Tail until it fainted. Good boy. Though, uh, <laughs> you didn't need to go that far. Well done, David. You beat the trial. Here's the fairy MZ. Fortunately, the battle with Hapu was easier than Mina's trial, thanks to Primarina Greninja and Leafeon sweeping them, capped off with an oceanic operetta on Hapu's Mudsdale, securing the win and finishing the Alolan challenge for both him and Will. David proceeded to head off to the League, where Vincent was waiting at the top of Mount Lanakilla, holding the golden lighter and two cherish balls in his hands. After today, the darkness plague in this world will be stopped. I am the light, and will forever illuminate this region. After he finishes that sentence, he sends up both of his Cherish Balls, and the Pokemon inside destroy all the wormholes in the sky with his rabbit-like Pokemon, as well as a lion laced with jewels. Back at the base of the mountain, David was getting ready to take on the Elite Four, but first had to sort out his team. Later. David took on Ace Rolla and Halifurst with relative ease, but it was the third battle that things got a lot more complicated. Upon opening the door, he found Professor Emerald with a reverse bear trap attached to him and trying to break out. As David tried to process this, Vincent came on the loudspeaker. I told you, Dave, that if you made it up to the mountain, you would see all their fates. And since you didn't listen, now the professor will die in 60 seconds because you entered this room and traded the trap. Farewell. In frustration, he tried to pull the trap off, but by doing so, the bear trap easily came off his head and landed on the ground. Uh, what the fu- I guess he was built for people with a more average weight than mine. Well, uh, that's a relief. After a bit of silence, David runs to the last Elite Four door and opens it, to reveal the Elite Four member chained to the wall, very bruised. Will! David rushes over alongside Emerald to get him down from the wall, but after he was freed, Vincent appears on the loudspeaker again. I don't know how he managed to escape that and free the professor, but I guess you're not completely in golden after all. Cut the crap, Vincent. 
This is between you and David. We had nothing to do with your death traps. Let's see, Professor. Indeed. By associating with David, he put you in those situations. If he hadn't opened the door, the trap wouldn't have activated and you may have believed. Hmm. Maybe so, but David helped save me. So even if it is true, the one who put me in those situations through association saved me. Someone he barely knew. He spent his own life being in risk. And last I checked, he didn't turn my husband's face into the deli's daily meat. Will needs medical attention, as does Telly. Your issue is with me. Leave them out of it. Right, then. I will let them go. I will be waiting at the top of the mountain. Oh, no. Later. So, you finally arrived. Shut the fuck up. I've heard enough of your shit after what you did to my friends. This ends here. I will admit that I was surprised. Regardless, let's end this. And so the final battle commences. Vincent sent out his Lucario, and both proceeded to use their Mega Evolution stones right away. David wasn't holding back, and Vincent could see that. The two Megas went at it, countering blow for blow, dodge for dodge. They were evenly matched, but Vincent wasn't saying anything, while David was issuing commands. Noticing this, David remembered the match Vincent had with Will, and began to put two and two together. So he's a telepath. Well, it's cheap, but I think I got an idea to counter it. The two Lucarios were still evenly matched. Even after Vincent's Lucario hit the other with close combat, David's Lucario was still standing and shoved him to the ground before proceeding to punch him repeatedly in the chest now that his defenses were weakened. But after a few more swings, Vincent's Lucario punched David's in the stomach and threw her to the ground before hitting her with a dragon pulse. But Lucario deflected it with Bone Club just in time, only taking minor damage. So you prioritize speed of a power on my ace's creation? What a joke. You wanna talk jokes? At least my Lucario defeated the Zoroark you were in control of, while yours was on the couch binge-watching Friends. And come on, close combat? The only thing close about it is how close your Lucario is to fainting after all those defense drops and misses. Vincent, however, was unfazed by the comments. However, his fists were clenching. Meanwhile, his Lucario was beginning to feel exhaustion after all the punches inflicted on him, and David's Lucario wasn't faring much better after laying down a barrage of punches at super speed and all the dodging earlier. And finally... The closest burn you ever gave was on my back, and yet I'm still here, so I guess it wasn't at all that effective. Much like your attempts to get back Zoroark, having to rely on the one you describe as a disease to do the job. And then you claim credit for her once it's done, like the kid in a group project who just slaces around while the rest do the hard work. Vincent's fist clenched further and Zuccario roared in anger before dashing towards David Zuccario and smashed it across the face. But Lucario was still standing, and used Force Palm on Vincent Zuccario's chest and fainted. Vincent stood there silent for a moment, before returning his Zuccario to the ball and bringing it as Maximon. Go, Naganado. Almost immediately, Naganado was on the attack, picking up Lucario by the head and dragging it across the ground. Lucario tried to fight back by using Bone Club and was able to break free, but Naganado hit it with a flamethrower, feigning Lucario. Vincent commanded Naganado to go for Lucario's head, but was smacked into the air with a tail. Yep. Tyrantrum popped out just in the nick of time to save his friend, to David's surprise, and Vincent's, well, neutral expression. Oh, thanks buddy, you were a real lifesaver. And thank you as well, Lucario. You did great. Two months smiled before Lucario was returned to the ball. As Nakanaddle returned to the ground, enraged, Vincent spoke up. Out of every dragon type that exists in this world, you chose the vicious, disobedient king? How fitting, actually. But David and Tyrantrum were unfazed by that comment, and got ready to continue the match. Naganadal aimed for the head of Tyrantrum this time, but Tyrantrum dodged with ease and bit into the needle HARD before hitting it with Ice Fang, freezing the lower half of Naganadal in the process, but continued the assault. Unfortunately for Naganadal, its speed was now even slower than before due to the increased weight on its body. That is, until Vincent called it over and SMASHED the ice off his monster in one punch surprising his opponent. But even that wasn't enough for Naganadal, as it was thrown into the air once more by Tyrantrum, and in its rage, threw multiple Draco Meteors at the Rock Dragon with everything it's got. The Meteor Shower came down hard, but Tyrantrum was unfazed by this display as it bobbed and weaved through it all, using the rocks as makeshift platforms even upwards towards Naganadal, who was now taking a massive stat drop due to the use of it and didn't even see Tyrantrum heading towards it until it was too late. Ice Fang! Vincent tried to get his Noggin Noddle to dodge the attack, but it was too late. The dragon was frozen solid and hurtling to the ground. 
with Tyrantrum holding it down tight to prevent escape, resulting in Naganadl hitting the mountain with a bang before fainting. Vincent returned Naganadl to its ball. Clearly, Naganadl underestimated your vile beast's power, but this next one will not. Go, Tapu Fini! But this wasn't the one from the final island. This Tapu was painted black instead of purple, and stars came out of it. And the silence was quickly broken by Feeny's ability, Misty Surge activating, coating the area in a pink glow. And once that was done, Feeny dashed towards Tyrantrum and hit it with a moon blast to the chest, sending the king back and doing a good amount of damage to it. But Tyrantrum got back up and charged towards the Tapu, but it dodged the rush and hit Tyrantrum with another moon blast. But before it hit its back, the moon was cut in half by his iron tail. But part of the moon did hit Tyrantrum, as did part of the iron tail for Tapu Feeny, leaving them both temporarily dazed. Tyrantrum, I got an idea! You Sandstorm! Tyrantrum in its days was able to understand this trainer's command and unleash the move, blinding the two trainers a bit, but also blinding Tapu Fini in the process. Tapu Fini aimed another moon blast at Tyrantrum, but due to the sand, was unable to land an exact target and it missed, letting Tyrantrum get a free hit on Tapu Fini with another Iron Tail, sending it to the ground. As the two landed on the ground, they continued their assault, but it was clear Fini wasn't going anywhere with the sweater in the way. She had to think of something quick. Fortunately, the sandstorm wore off, but so did the terrain. Now things are even once more, but as Tyrantrum was about to slash Tapu Fini with Iron Tail, Fini reverted into its shell and dashed away from the dino just in time before hitting it with Hydro Pump once more. As the dino stood up once again, Tyrantrum was feeling exhausted, but Tapu was starting to show the signs of exhaustion as well. Tapu Fini then got into its shell form once more and readied a waterfall attack towards Tyrantrum, but despite this threat, Tyrantrum wasn't worried, as he looked to his claws and jammed them in his mouth, confusing the two trainers and Feeny for a moment, but David slowly realized what Tyrantrum was doing and nodded his head to his mon. Tapu Feeny charged towards the Tyrantrum at fast speed, and with a little bit of time left, Tyrantrum spit out his claws and clenched them tight as he readied his attack. The two mons collided with one another, ending with them on opposite ends of the arena like a joust, and then silence. Until Tyrantrum knelt to the ground in pain, clutching his stomach, but he was still standing. As for Tapu Fini, Vincent was dumbfounded by this, but as Vincent looked closer at the dino, he saw in horror what happened. He shoved those holes in his mouth and used toxic poison from him to cough them out of it. But that was so risky! I love it for a move that may not work. I... Ah. I see that I have underestimated this beast after all. Tyrantrum then stood up and faced to Vincent with a death glare in his eyes, while his claws were shrinking due to the acid before proceeding to look into the sky and gave his trainer a thumbs up, fainting while standing. And of course, Feeny was also fainted by this point. You did an amazing job, Tyrantrum. Seriously, I am so proud of you. You deserve a good rest. He then returned Tyrantrum to his ball and returned to his part of the arena, while Vincent was still dumbfounded by what just happened. So, are we done? I KO'd three of your Pokémon, or are we going for a full battle? This snapped Vincent out of it, and he had a new look on his face, one of rage. You have the nerve to ask that of a champion, you disease spawn! Of course we're not done. And just because you took out my Tapu does not mean you've defeated me yet. He then pulled out a Cherish Ball. I may not have much experience with this one, when compared to my other party members, but it's time to show you the true power of the electric type. Go, Zeus! David was confused by this. He never encountered this breed of Lopunny before. Even after pulling in his Pokedex, it didn't give him any information on it. It took David a moment to think, before his eyes widened in horror. That's the egg you stole! I know you said something intelligent once in your life. Yes, this is the spawn of your Lushra and Lopunny. They both had great potential, but were absent for so much of this child's life. You forced those two to have a kid, and then you took it! Of course he never got to see his parents! You robbed him of it! Much like how you robbed me and your mother of everything good in life, consider this an appropriate punishment for what you have done. Zeus then roared towards the sky and unleashed a massive thunderstorm upon the area. David shook his head at this nonsense and brought his Lopunny, who heard everything and gave Vincent a death glare. But Vincent was unfazed by this and sent out his Lopunny to attack. But despite having the faster speed, Lopunny didn't attack Zeus. She just stood there and let Zeus hit her with Thunder Punch, followed by Ice Punch, and then a Focus Punch, with Zeus screaming all the while at the Lopunny for abandoning him. 
but Lopney let Zeus hit her. She still had her death glare on Vincent and was barely feeling any pain from the attacks. David wasn't even issuing any commands at this point. He knew what Lopney was doing and let her do it. Even after getting punched in the face hard by that focus punch, Lopney didn't even let out a cry of pain. She wanted to, especially after a super effective hit like that, but her pain was secondary to her list of priorities at this point. Meanwhile, Zeus was feeling exhaustion set in after laying down so many punches, but he was getting more pissed off at the fact Lopney wasn't even fighting back or feigning. What was she waiting for? Why wasn't she hitting him back? Could it be because she feels guilty now? Or is it like David said, and he was stolen away from his parents? His mind then flashed back to him as a Buneary, getting genetically altered into an electric normal type, the constant shocks as part of his training, and when the flashbacks ended, Zeus cried out in rage once more, and hit Lopany with close combat, with everything he's got. Lopany was now covered in bruises, but was just still standing there, not even doing anything. Zeus was now on the ground panting. Would this faint Lopany? No. She was still standing there, and then aims her ears at him. Zeus was too exhausted to move now. Was this the end for him? He closed his eyes, and then... nothing, except warmth around him. As he slowly opened his eyes, he saw that Lopany was hugging him. Despite everything he did to her, despite all the screaming and punches and bruises, she was hugging him? Zeus didn't understand any of this. But Lopani just kept hugging him despite the pain she was in now that her rage had subsided. Zeus, embraced by all this warmth, also let his rage subside, then hugged Lopani back, crying. David looked at the two and smiled, as did Luxray in his ball. He was glad that things seemed to be working out. But then, after a bit, the two rabbits collapsed out of exhaustion, still in a hug. With them both fainted, David returned Lopani to his ball and smiled. But Vincent didn't return his Lopani. At first. Instead, he pulled out another Pokeball and threw it out, revealing another Ultra Beast, Blacephalon. Blacephalon, kill that failure of a specimen. David's eyes widened before running out to shield Zeus from the explosion. It's okay, Zeus. We're here for you. Blacephalon was ordered to explode again. But this time David and Zeus rolled out of the way, and the ball head was smacked back to its owner, sending it back a bit, and revealing Luxray to the battlefield. David nodded to his Luxray and ran back to his section of the arena with Zeus to continue the battle. This is turning into an edgy fanfiction, Vincent! Stop this! Not until you kill yourself. Ever since you were born, you have ruined everything in this world. My career, my marriage, my wife, I have nothing left, except to end the disease that caused it all. You. I will break everything you hold close until you finally end your life. You already did. What? You already broke everything I held close long ago. My health, my back, a stable family. All of it was destroyed because of you. I had next to nothing except for mom. And then she passed on too. And then I completely had nothing. Or at least, that's what I thought. But then I remembered, Riolu. She was still there by my side through it all. The burn, the divorce, the death. I just didn't realize it until then. Yeah, it's silly. Yeah, it's stupid. But at least I had something to help me through that part of life. I was broken, but thanks to Riolu, I was able to piece myself back together. And now that I have more friends, both Pokemon and human, I know that I'll piece myself back together again, even if you try to break everything once again. I will never forgive you for what you did to me all those years ago, Vincent. But I don't need to, because I'm happy with my life now. I have friends, as well as others who care about me, who will help me when I get knocked down. And I will absolutely do the same for them, like right now, as me and my Pokemon friends take you down. David said with a smile, followed by Luxray and the rest of his team. Vincent was silent after that. He just closed his eyes, and Blacephalon went on the attack once again. But Luxray was able to dodge its attacks, and take it down with a few critical crunches, causing it to faint. Vincent said nothing here as well. He just returned Blacephalon to its ball, and pulled out a Cherish Ball. David Lexus Grimm. This is my last Pokemon, your last challenge before taking my throne. If you truly meant what you said about taking me down, Make this count. The ball opens to reveal Duskmane Necrozma. Luxray charged at it, but Necrozma critted it with an earthquake and fainted the Pokemon. 
Mimikyu was able to do a good amount of damage to it with the C move, Let's Snuggle Forever, but when Vincent activated Neural Force and transformed Necrozma to Ultra Necrozma, Mimikyu was knocked out after a long battle with the second dragon. Necrozma took a good amount of damage from Mimikyu, but it was still standing and still very powerful. And so, David sent out Cream Arena and landed an Icy Wind, which after a couple attempts, and also getting a few Metal Claws to the chest for its trouble, managed to successfully lower Necrozma's speed enough for Primarina to now outspeed it and go on the offensive, with Moonblast combined with Shadow Balls doing massive damage to Necrozma thanks to the two typings being its weakness. With few options left, Vincent slams his spear on the ground and activates his Necrozium Z Crystal to try and finish off Primarina. Ultra Necrozma, it is time. Give us the light that burns the sky! Necrozma makes a giant ball of energy in the air and launches at Primarina. But Primarina was ready for the counterattack as it launches a moon blast at the ground, sending it towards the sky as well before proceeding to charge up another moon blast, this time just as big as the Z move, and the two attacks collide. David walked over to give his Primarina a hug, while Vincent closed his eyes and just returned the Crosm to his ball. Well, you won. You are officially the champion of Alola now. This was never about the title. And besides, I don't deserve this. Nobody in Alola deserved to suffer through this. At all. They need a champion to inspire, not rule or be terrified of. That person is definitely not you. And it's not me either. Someone like Will deserves the title more. Even with something so simple, you make it messy. But I get it. So far, Will shall get the position of champion. That's good and all, but we have some unfinished business to settle. All of a sudden, Tully appeared, covered in bandages, alongside multiple police officers and David's boss. Tully and... Uh, Mr. Sirium, it's surprising to see you here, sir. Well, after getting the information from Professor Emerald about the plane incident and everything else, I figured I'd handle this part personally. You did very well, David. Not only for your capture of Zoroark and the decks and trees of the variants, but also in defeating Vincent. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate that. Of course. Now then, as for you, Vincent, spare me the speech. I know I'm a no wrist. I don't know why you wait until after a battle to do your job, but I have no issue serving my punishment. Later. Even after winning, and after getting Zeus, there were some slight casualties and or damages. Tyrantrum's claws, while still functioning, were incredibly shortened by the use of Poison Fang, and it would take a good amount of time to heal. Lucario's neck and right arm were dinged up really badly and would need some time to recover as well. Same with Lopany. Primarina's necks and paws were also damaged in the final fight. Fortunately, Zeus wasn't too injured, and Luxury only had minor injuries. Same with Mimikyu, surprisingly. But David spent an extra week in Alola after the final fight to not only see what could be done for his Pokemon, and unfortunately there was nothing for them to do but let time heal due to them not really having any fatal injuries, but he also stayed for that week to see the outcome of the trial for Vincent, which was a guilty verdict for the former champion. Once the trial ended, he paid Vincent one last visit in prison to say his goodbyes, and then said the same to Will and Tully. So, where will you go? I'm going to spend some time at home in Dokken to let my Pokemon recover until I get called in for another assignment. After all this shit, we need a break. But I will stop by and visit when I can. Well, we'll be waiting. Yeah, besides, I gotta test my medal against the guy I took down the champion, now that I am in charge. <laughs> Very good point. Well, I'll see you guys around. David shook their hands and made his way home to Dokken. The Vincent part of his life was now over. Now it was time for a new saga in his life. What would it be? Plus, there was something that hung in the back of his mind during his time in Dokken. There was another signal around the Kalos area when he was going through that region, and when his boss was trying to contact him. Could that have been Vincent? Or was there someone else out there related to Vincent? Well, like many things out there, only time will tell. And that is the end of Chapter 3. Thank you all so much for watching this part. I really do appreciate it, and my deepest, deepest apologies for the delays, as well as the length of this one. There was a lot to go through, especially with being the finale of the Vincent Saga. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and while this technically is the finale of the main story, there is a couple smaller plot threads left to be resolved, 
and that is the second signal, as well as who opened the wormholes. So much like part 4 of JoJo, we're going to deal with the aftermath of the main antagonist now that he's been dealt with. Hopefully that won't be as long as this part, but until then, thank you all for watching, and take care. So, yeah, David won against Vincent. It's crazy. I see. So, what are you going to do with that info? What else? Invite him to my region to test his metal. Hopefully he won't be much of a disappointment like Vincent was. Uh, okay then. But I need you to come here too. People will get suspicious if the champion is missing from his region for too long. Hey, that's your problem, not mine. I will make it your problem if you don't get your ass back here. Uh, fine. I'll be on the next flight to Galar. Sweet. See you there. What was that about? Well, Shadow needs me for his weird offs in Galar, so let's make this quick. Oh my. <sighs> Just for that, you're getting the fish.